Hi there, my friends. Welcome again to Indian Story Read Along. Today's story is going to be from the Panchatantra stories. Panchatantra are a, a collection of moral stories for children. It's a little weird because back then, like ancient times, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 years ago or before that, when uh, these stories were, when they're, they're set, where they're taking place, there was a different uh, thing that we would introduce children to, which is not the way that we would do things now. So some of them are kind of violent, some of them are kind of strange, like you're not really sure about what this person is thinking, but it was very common back then. And a lot of these stories have to do with animals. There's a lot of talking animals, and some of which you will see in this story. And other things that could also talk that couldn't normally talk, like things in nature, the wind, mountains. That's what you'll see in this story. It's called The Mouse and the Sage. Long, long ago, in a hermitage on the bank of the river Ganga, there lived a sage called Yajnavalkya. He was a real sage. Yajnavalkya is, is a, a famously known sage, and uh, he wrote an, a lot of ancient texts that uh, some people uh, still read and refer to. So one day, as Yajnavalkya was saying his prayers in the sacred stream in the Ganga, so you see way back over there in the distance, there is an eagle. The eagle dropped that mouse from its, maybe he just lost his grip or something. Eagles aren't really known for losing their grip, but uh, it dropped that mouse and plop, it landed right into Yajnavalkya's hands while he's standing there waist deep in the water. He's like, what's this? A mouse? For a moment, the sage wondered what to do with it. If I leave it on the bank, the hawk may once again pounce on it, he was thinking. Looks like uh, that eagle did lose its grip. Then an idea struck him. And he's thinking, why not? And my wife has always wanted a daughter. Yes, I'll turn it into a baby girl. And so, as I was saying earlier, things that you wouldn't normally think that would happen, happen in these Panchatantra stories. Like a guy in the water finds a mouse, turns it into a kid. And uh, this was completely normal. Yajnavalkya and several other sages in ancient, ancient times were known to have yogic powers. That means that they had identified so deeply with the universe that they had the power to manipulate time, matter, energy, all kinds of different things. So that is what they call yogic powers. And it manifests like we look at it as magic. It's not really magic. It's becoming one with your entire environment. So that's what Yajnavalkya did. And he's like, yeah, you know what? We can't have children, so uh, let's just turn this into a baby. What anyone would do. So using his yogic powers, he changed the mouse into a baby girl and took her home to his wife. Take care, take her, dear wife, and rear her as our own daughter. And, he, and she says, oh, my prayers have at last been answered. You know what I like about this? Everywhere in India and in South Asia and so many different parts in the world, everyone's just like, oh, I want a son. If only I can have a son to rule my kingdom and to give all my wealth to when I die. Everyone's after sons all the time. But this guy's like, I've always wanted a little girl. And that's super, super special, especially in a world where a lot of people, sadly, don't know the, the worth of little girls and they only want sons. The girl grew up in the sage's house. Soon, she was 12 years old. And then his wife says, dear husband, don't you think it's time we found a suitable husband for our daughter? <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't be laughing, but I am because she's 12 years old. <laughs> I mean, she would still be in elementary school at this time right now. But like I said, it was a different time. People grew up a lot differently and actually a lot faster. There was no such thing as being a teenager. So being a teenager is just kind of a, a recent thing that we've developed in our cultures and, and in our society. Back then you went straight from child to adult. And as soon as you could take care of yourself, you were an adult. 
And that's kind of what they were thinking about here. So as an adult, she could get married. And if we think it's weird, it wasn't only in ancient times. My grandmother, she got married when she was 13. It wasn't something that she wanted to do. Like they don't really want to, you're just a child, but that's just what they did. And uh, my grandmother was born only in 1926. So this wasn't that long ago. People were doing this. So Yagnavald uh, goes, yeah, she's 12, that's, that's pretty old. Yeah, you're right. I must give her to someone really worthy of her. And because Yagnavalkya was so powerful and he could communicate with nature because he was that, he could identify with everything in the universe as a, a deeply powerful spiritual soul, he just says very casually, I will summon the sun and give her to him. And of course, there's a sun god, Surya. The wife says, okay, that's a good choice. <laughs> that's the first thing you think of <laughs> for a son-in-law. And then Yagnavalkya summoned him. And he comes along riding with all of his white horses. Surya comes along and he says, Holy sir, what do you want of me? And imagine the kind of power that you have to summon nature to come there and talk to you. So Yagnavalkya says, I want you to marry my daughter if she is willing, which is like super awesome. And I think that says a lot about how things were in ancient times. A lot of people from the West will say things about South Asian culture and they'll say that, oh, girls don't get a choice if they get married. Oh, they're just given away. That's not what our culture was, especially not in ancient times. And the proof is right here. If she is willing, and you will see one after the other in this story, Yagnavalkya asks his daughter and he doesn't do anything without her consent. And that is super, super important because what actually happened is that they valued women and girls so, so highly, and they respected them deeply. Somewhere, I think, with Western influence and stuff, that went away. Then the sage turned to his daughter. Will you marry the son who gives light and warmth to all the three worlds? And then, look how comfortable this girl is just saying it right out in front of the guy that was thinking about marrying her and her dad. And she says, no, father, I do not like him because he is too hot. Isn't there someone greater than him? Like, look, you have to have a very, very, very comfortable relationship with your child and give them so much confidence that they can say anything that they need to say in front of you, especially if it's not that nice or pleasant or convenient. So he w has that relationship with her and he raised her in a way that she can come to him with anything. That's something that's so awesome. And look, Surya is also pretty cool. It's like, there's no hard feelings. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I get it, I get it. Yeah, so <laughs> the Yagyavalkya is like, oh, blessed one. He's like, look, can you refer me to someone else? <laughs> is there anyone superior to you? I love how there's like just so much psychologically healthy stuff going on in this story that you really have to think about to, to, to notice it. So Surya is also really cool. He doesn't feel rejected at all. He's like, yes, the cloud. The cloud can blot me out whenever he feels like it. So the sage summoned the cloud. And then he says to his daughter, little girl, will you marry him? And then again, she doesn't feel like, oh, you know, I already turned out that down that one guy. I should probably just be nice and say yes to this guy. No, she is confident and strong. And that's how Yagnavalkya and his wife raised her. So she says, no, father, he is dark and cold. Please find me someone better. And then he says, oh, Cloud, is there someone better than you? And again, Cloud is not like, well, look, you turned me down, so I'm not helping you. <laughs> He's not like that at all. Like everyone is super cool in this story. And uh, Cloud is saying, yes, the wind, he can push me about as he pleases. So the wind was summoned, but the little girl didn't want him either. And she says, I'm sorry, father, how can I marry him? He is always restless. True that, he's always moving around. So then he says to Vayu, the wind god, he says, oh, wind, can you suggest someone steady? 
And then the wind says, why the mountain, of course. He never moves. Try as I might, I can't push him around. So the sage took his daughter to the mountain. And then, look, he's massive. And then <laughs> and he, his rocks are formed like a mustache. <laughs> I like that. It's my favorite part. Um, and then he says, oh, mountain, will you accept my daughter for a wife? And then uh, mountain says, gladly, oh, sage. Yajnavalkya says, I shall marry you to him, my daughter. Who could be sturdier than him? But to his surprise, his daughter was almost in tears. Oh, father, please spare me. He is so coarse and lifeless. Please, please find someone more lively. And I like it so much that Yajnavalkya is taking her feelings into consideration. Because um, of Western influences that girls should be doing what they're told, and that's how it was when you look at all of these uh, marriages for centuries in European royalty. Um, they were all arranged marriages and they were all like, you had to marry the person because our kingdoms have to have a good relationship with each other. And that through Europeans taking over places like India and places in Africa, that influence unfortunately came here. Like, look, girls, you don't get a choice. But back before all those influences were there, girls had a choice. The sage looked up at the wise mountain. Oh, mighty wise one, can you suggest someone more suitable? And then mountain says, of course I can. The best mate for your daughter would be the king of the mice. He's the liveliest, friskiest creature I've seen in my lifetime. And I am many hundreds of years old. Isn't that something you guys, the mouse? You remember how the story started, huh? So the sage summoned the king of the mice. As soon as he appeared, the little girl quivered with joy. Father, he's the one I'll marry. Please turn me into a mouse so I can keep house for him as a good wife should. Okay then. The sage used his yogic powers and turned her back into a mouse. What does this tell you? What do you guys think the moral of the story is even before we get there? He then gave her in marriage to the king of the mice. And look, all the other guys are there at the wedding. All right. So then, Yagnyavalkya is thinking, strange are the ways of nature. I brought her up as a human child. I offered her the sun, the cloud, the wind, the mountain. And yet she found she could be happy only with the humble mouse. So the moral is, let a mouse be a mouse. That means whoever you are, no one should ever be trying to change you because whatever your true nature is, that's always going to be there under the surface. So maybe he was happy and maybe she was happy to have been raised as his daughter, but ultimately she had to go back to who she truly was. I really loved this story. I loved all the little hidden meanings in there, all the little hidden Easter eggs about what our culture is really like. And uh, until I read this, I didn't know any of that. I thought like, hey, my grandma didn't get a choice when she got married at 13, but apparently other girls thankfully did. So um, I hope you, that you'll come back to this channel again. We have lots more stories. I have so many more stories to read. Um, it's Indian uh, Story Read Along, and I hope that you will come back and join us again.